This is the Aperture VMic D2, successor to, you guessed it, the Aperture VMic D1. It's a compact, lightweight, mono shotgun mic for use on top of a camera or camcorder in place of an internal mic. The mic itself is around 19 centimeters long, that's about 7.5 inches, and also has a standard foam pop shield and a rubberized suspension mount on top of a base unit. It comes supplied with a furry windshield, two AAA batteries, a cable from the mic to the base unit, as well as a cable from the base to your camera, and some instructions. The two batteries slot into the back of the mic, and Aperture claim at least 100 hours runtime. Being battery powered is good news for anyone whose camera doesn't supply power via the mic jack, and that includes some Canon camcorders. It means the Aperture will still work with these. The supplied mini USB cable plugs into the side of the mic and down to the base unit. Then the output from that runs on a standard 3.5mm jack to your camcorder. Unusually, the base unit boasts an internal preamplifier with a control knob on the side to adjust its sensitivity, along with two calibration LEDs, one for minus 12 dB and one for overload. The general gist is that the minus 12 dB light should be flashing while you're recording, but not the overload light. And one of this mic's key selling points is a calibration feature, whereby you flick a switch on the bass and it sends a full-scale beeping pulse to your camcorder. You adjust your camcorder's recording volume against this so that the meters are just hitting maximum. Then you can simply use the knob on the microphone to adjust volume, rather than having to mess about in any fiddly menus on your camera or camcorder. Now in theory, the VMic's preamp will be quieter and better than the one in a camera, though the improvement may not be so much on a camcorder, as these generally have better audio than DSLRs, but we'll come back to all of that in the tests in a moment. Aperture are pitching the VMic D2 firmly against Rode's VideoMic Pro, and that's an ambitious target, as the Pro is so popular, but it is about double the price of the VMic. So here they are lined up for size, and also with the Rode VideoMic Go, which is comparable price-wise with the D2. So what does the VMic D2 actually sound like? Here are some test recordings against the two Rode offerings, including male and female speech, some silence to hear the inherent noise in the mics, and some music. This is a test of the Aperture VMic D2. I've got the volume knob set to just about 1, because any louder makes it really, really loud, despite having done the calibration. I'm now going to shut up for a second, and let's hear the uh, microphone's inherent noise. For comparison then, this is a Rode VideoMic Pro, with its output level set at uh, zero, so I'll be quiet on this one for a second. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, that lamb was sure to go. This is a test of the Aperture VMic D2. 
first of all tested with the fan off and the windshield off, just to remind ourselves how it sounds normally. Now I'll put the windshield on and we'll see if that makes any difference to the sound of the microphone. So now I've put the windshield on the Aperture VMic D2. All the other conditions are the same. The fan is still off. At the moment we're just testing how it sounds with the windshield on. Has it muffled my voice in any way? I should point out that I'm speaking from only about a foot distance from the mic, so I am quite close to it. Now what I'll do is switch the fan on and we'll see if the windshield proves effective. So the fan is on and I'm still talking from the same distance. The question is, can you hear my voice uh, clearly? Obviously there will be the, the noise of the fan going round, but the windshield should be blocking out the effects of the wind actually hitting the microphone itself. So in other words, you should still hear my voice clearly. And in a moment I'll take the windshield off, just so we can truly appreciate how badly the mic would be affected by the wind if the windshield weren't in place, if you see what I mean. But for a moment, uh, let's just have another listen to how well it's doing with the uh, wind blowing straight at it. So this then is how the Aperture VMic D2 sounds when it's virtually naked with the windshield off and a very stiff breeze blowing at it from the side. It's really not having a happy time of it at all. Yes, you can hear my voice, but quite obviously the mic is being quite badly buffeted by the wind. I'll just try the same experiment if the wind were more head-on into the microphone as well. We'll see what that sounds like. Well, now I'm speaking into the Aperture VMic D2 from just behind the fan, which as you can see is directly in front of the microphone, and once again the microphone having a pretty bad time of it, as any microphone would to be fair, it's uh, not something that would be specific to this mic, if you point a breeze directly into a microphone it's not going to enjoy the experience. What I'll do now is just put the windshield back on, we'll see if it can cope. And here we are with the windshield on the Aperture VMic D2, clearly making a substantial difference when head-on, uh, pretty much blocking out most of the wind noise. You can hear the fan running, of course, that's normal, uh, but actually doing quite a good job from head on. Better, in fact, than when the wind was coming from the side. So that perhaps is something to bear in mind if you do go out recording outside with this. Face the breeze and have it coming straight towards you rather than side on, as the side on rejection of the breeze was less than it is when directly coming at the mic. Now for interest I thought I'd do a comparison with a Rykot wind jammer, Rykot being one of the best names in wind jamming technology, they're an industry standard, they're not cheap, so I thought I'd put one of those on and see how that compared. Uh, so here I am speaking from that same position just behind the fan uh, with the Rykot windshield on the Aperture VMic D2 and as you can hear it's I would say actually doing a slightly better job as you would hope and expect for the price of blocking out the wind and in a moment I'll turn it sideways on so we can compare that as well.
And the final test then is the same side-on rumble test. How well is the microphone holding up against the wind being blasted straight at it from the sides, this time with the Ryko windshield on? It is obviously a very tough test. The distance between the mic and the fan is not very much at all, six inches perhaps. The fan is blasting out a fair old breeze. And the Ryko doing a, a pretty good job of deflecting that wind but still the mic obviously having a tough time of it. So the fan is on and I'm still talking from the same distance. The question is, can you hear my voice uh, clearly? Obviously there will be the, the noise of the fan going round, this time with the Ryko windshield on. It is obviously a very tough test. The distance between the mic and the fan is not very much at all, six inches perhaps, so we can truly appreciate how badly the mic would be affected by the wind if the windshield weren't in place, if you see what I mean. So a lot of testing there, but what about some conclusions? Well, let me first of all point out that I am recording this concluding piece to camera using the Aperture VMic D2. It is over there, plugged into a Canon XA20, 1.3 meters away from my mouth. That is a little bit further than ideally I would like. The microphone I usually use when recording these, it's up there and it's 70 centimetres away, which is a much better distance, but that's just the way I have this room set up. If I wanted to plug the mic in, it had to be over there. The acoustics in this room also are fairly terrible, lots of flat walls, sounds a bit like a bathroom, so ignore that if you can while just listening to my voice on the mic. Now, conclusions, as I say, is this mic any good? Is it worth your money? Well, Aperture are pitching it very firmly up against the Rode VideoMic Pro. That retails here in the UK for about £120-£125, and the Aperture retails for about £80, so it's two-thirds the price. And you certainly get a decent amount in the box, there's not just the microphone, you also get that fluffy windshield, you get the batteries included and the cables, so it is a complete package. In terms of sound, I would say it sounds very similar those roads, certainly when listening to that piano piece, as we were cutting between the different mics, to my ears, which are getting on a bit it must be said, they didn't sound very different at all. There are however two caveats on this microphone. The first of all is that it does seem like the Rode Video Mic Go to be very susceptible to picking up stray electronic noise, particularly mobile phones which are in the vicinity. I've got my phone, for example, just down there at the moment, and for all I know, it's merrily picking up the sound of that chirping away to the network. And we had that problem when recording that piano piece. The other caveat is that the inherent self-noise, the electronic sort of whooshing noise that all electronics, all analog electronics inherently make, is louder in this microphone than it was in the Rode VideoMic Pro, and I think that came out in the testing. It's not hugely loud, but it is audible. So, if you are recording loud sounds, such as that piano piece, or you're out where there's lots of hustle and bustle and noise, you probably won't notice the inherent self-noise of the mic. If you're recording a piece to camera like this, then it is probably audible if you are a picky audiophile, as I try to be. So just bear that in mind. You will need to be wearing headphones if you are going to use this mic for recording. Firstly, to hear whether you can hear that hiss, and secondly, to hear whether the mic is picking up any stray electrical sound. That said, it is a cheap microphone. 80 quid is not a lot for a microphone. You can't expect it to be on a par with a Sennheiser or an Audio-Technica or something like that. It does a reasonable job provided you bear in mind its limitations. Thank you for watching this video. I always do appreciate it. If this video is useful to you, then please give a click on that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber to the channel, then why not click the subscribe button as well? That way, YouTube should notify you of any future videos on the channel under the Your Subscriptions tick box. So, thanks for watching. Bye-bye now.